is uh, very historic, not just for Saudi Arabia, but for the Arab world. And then Ali al Qarni has been a fighter pilot by, uh, by for a long time. Now, Saudi Arabia conducted a wide research uh, before they finalized these two names. Uh, they have been working on this project for a while now because they want to make space as a critical plan of their program to diversify their economy and modernize their economy as they try to move away from oil. So there was a, uh, a re uh, they had done a lot of interviews, screened a lot of profiles before they finalized these two names. And yes, it is indeed a historic day for Saudi Arabia because it's going to be its first foray uh, in a, 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 a space mission in almost uh, 40 years. They're not the first Saudis to make this trip. In 1985, uh, Sultan Al Salman, Prince Sultan Al Salman, who's the half brother of current uh, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and the son of the current king, King Salman, had also made a trip in the Arab Sat One satellite in 1985. Uh, so, but nevertheless, given that. for drag and should a contingency occur changes from stage to stage. Chill, underway. chill announcement says we're getting the turbo pump on the second stage engine cooled down in preparation for its light up coming up in just another minute from now. Again, great views looking back and you can see the contrail as we left 39A and the, uh, the shadow of the contrail against the cloud deck around Florida. Now we're coming up, three big sequences and a view live of the crew inside Dragon. They're getting ready. We're going to get three events here, main engine cutoff, stage separation, and then we're going to light the second stage engine. We've heard the throttle down in preparation for stage separation. Separation. We've lit the second stage engine. The first stage is into the boost back burn, working its way back towards Cape Canaveral. He's on the left side. That's the first stage. Engine's running as we come back to the launch site or the landing site. Second stage engine nozzle is visible on the right side as we're powering the Axiom 2 crew into low Earth orbit on the way to the International Space Station. Waiting for call out that the boost back burn is complete. Stage one, boost back shutdown. Stage two, boost back shutdown. Right on time. First stage completed the first of three burns heading back to the landing site. Second stage continuing on power and on trajectory. Acquisition signal, Bermuda. At northeast, the Bermuda ground station. SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Bermuda is listening in to the vehicle now. Nominal trajectory. 
and the crew hears the call out of a nominal trajectory. So four minutes into flight, everything continuing to go well, first stage heading back, and there's the crew on the second stage, giving the ride into orbit to the space station. Coming up, we're waiting for the next trajectory call out from the guidance officer. Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Ah, love to hear those words. A nominal trajectory for Dragon. Copy, nominal trajectory. And maybe even a little bit of excitement in the crew's voice. Commander Peggy Whitson calling back down, hearing that call out from GNC of a nominal trajectory. Left side of the screen, you can see the first stage. It's now beginning to orient itself so that the engines are pointed down towards the land as we will be descending towards landing zone one in Cape Canaveral. The four titanium grid fins have all deployed. They'll help guide the, they'll guide the first stage through the, once we get into the atmosphere following the entry burn, which will be coming up here in another couple of minutes. On the right hand side, the second stage with the dragon capsule on top, Heading up the eastern seaboard of the U.S., we've just heard the call out of Boston, that's the New Hampshire tracking station, has picked up the signal. Dragon SpaceX trajectory nominal. And see, continuing to make those call outs that we want to hear. Everything continuing to look good. And the crew echoing them right back down. Good comms with the crew. We've been able to bring some uh, live video shots from inside the capsule as they're headed to space. And there's another view of the crew. Stage one, entry burn, startup. And there we heard that the startup burn for that stage one booster, you can see it there on the left-hand side of your screen, has now begun. Stage one, entry burn, shut down. And conclusion of that entry burn, that burn helps to uh, slow the vehicle down as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. The first, day, the first stage sees high drag, which scrubs roughly 70% of the velocity by the time Dragon that that Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Love to hear that call out. Everything nominal trajectory. Beautiful view of planet Earth coming to us from the second stage views on the right-hand side. Left hand side, our first view of the Space Coast once again. This booster is attempting a landing at LZ1. Stage one, transonic. That booster is now traveling near the speed of sound. Live view coming to you from one of our tracking cameras. We can see the grid fins actuating to help steer the booster down. Stage one, landing for Stage two, FTS has saved. Standing by to stage one landing leg deploy. There you stage one landing confirmed. You can see that first stage has landed back at LZ1. This is the first time that we have performed a land landing on a crew mission. Coming up. Coming up next will be second engine cutoff, or SECO, and that's where after, after that engine cuts off, second stage will coast for a few minutes until Dragon is commanded to separate. Stage two is in terminal guidance. We're expecting SECO to occur in about 20 seconds. Shannon. Commander Peggy Woodson continuing to call out the abort modes. Thank you. All right, on time shutdown of that second engine. 
also confirming that the launch escape system is now disarmed. Dragon Space X, nominal orbit insertion. All right, and there's that call out. We can confirm good orbital insertion. Copy, nominal insertion. Dragon SpaceX. All right, welcome back. Uh, you've been watching this uh, very successful liftoff uh, there in, at the Kennedy Space Center, and I want to go to you, Captain Kelly, to talk about this because, I mean, I, I, I have to apologize a little. I think we kind of undersold what we were about to watch, uh, and that's all my fault. That's nobody else's fault. But, I mean, just what we witnessed there over the last 10 minutes or so was just extraordinary in that, Captain Kelly, we saw a land landing of that booster a stage one rocket that was extraordinary and then what we're seeing i guess happening right now is marvelous to watch as well and that this is this is really a space travel in many ways a space travel mission that we're watching on the right side of the screen right now your thoughts if you can help us unpack this because i'm sure i, I already screwed up the terminology and all of this but you can tell i'm geeking out here <laughs> this is fun to watch yeah you know jim when the uh, space shuttle used to uh fly that i had the privilege of flying twice on um, it was always a lot of drama to get it uh, to get it safely uh, into space because it was such a complicated aerospace vehicle. There's so much that could go wrong. Um, but with SpaceX, you know, they they make it look easy. I mean, yeah. there, this was just like a seemed like kind of a no-brainer of uh, launching four people into space and uh, to see one of my former classmates there and uh, three people I've never met before, but three rookies. Uh, anytime you're flying new people in space, it's great. And to see them get there safely, a um, uh, very happy day. And, and the space travel component of this, uh, Scott, I just want to ask you about that because uh, the Saudis apparently paid for two of those passengers there. And then we have one of the paying customers is John Schaffner, I hope I'm saying his name correctly, an American who made his fortune in the international telecom business, founded the hardware company Duraline. I mean, is we're at that stage now where fo rich folks can buy tickets on on these things and go into space and go to the space station. Is that is that right? <laughs> yeah, it seems to be. Um, it's pretty incredible time we're living in. It's uh, obviously still very expensive and out of the, uh, the the realm of possibility for most people around the world, but. I think the more we do this, um, the more the cost will come down and the uh, safety will go up. So this is just one small step, I think, to uh, more uh, frequent, common and affordable access to space for everyone. And it would be great for everyone to have the experience of seeing the Earth from space because I do think it changes you for the better. And I know you talked about that before. And Carlos, they must be, I know, as Scott was saying, they. they they make it look so easy now, but that doesn't mean they weren't holding their breath down there on the ground where you are. Could you see any of that uh, that stage one coming back in? I mean, I don't know if you could hear it or see it, or forgive me if you're nowhere near it and I'm getting this completely wrong, but your thoughts on the ground there. Yeah, so no, we were able to see uh, both the liftoff and we were able to hear as that stage one uh, rocket uh, landed here at Kennedy Space Center. Everyone was trying to see exactly where it was going to come in because there is some cloud coverage out here. And all of a sudden, you just heard that sonic boom and everyone just jumped back. Wow. The car alarms out here all began sounding. Uh, so we couldn't quite make out exactly where that stage one rocket booster landed, but there was no mistaking it had touched down because of that sonic boom. Uh, but as you guys have been talking, uh, having seen this four member crew earlier this afternoon, uh, when they first arrived here at the Kennedy Space Center, uh, they arrived by helicopter and they spent about 10 to 15 minutes with their families and we could overhear some of their conversations. And these four crew members were all incredibly excited uh, at getting to work at one point um, the uh, mission pilot, John uh, Schaffner, you could hear him telling his family, look, let's go, we're excited, let's do this. From there, they got into several cars and then made the drive out about three miles out to where the SpaceX uh, rocket uh, was located. Um, and as you can see by these live pictures right now, uh, they are, uh, it appears to be in space right now, considering that it seems that they are in their space capsule. Uh, they're dealing with no gravity. You can see it, it seems like one of them is playing around with a, a, a stuffed uh, animal, a teddy bear. Uh, that uh, they're kind of passing along between uh, one another. Jim? Yeah, thank you, Carlos. And Cam Kelly, just a few moments ago, we saw separation of the capsule there, um, and it, it's going to take a little while longer before it reaches the space station. Is that right? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure.